Guess who's back? Back, back, back again. You don't really get a lot of parkour games these days, do you? They're basically platformer games, but without really any story. Unless the story involved a sweaty gym goer jumping over buildings to evade the police from stealing the last LucasAid in existence. Implying that the police would still exist in such a society, but I digress. The only real first person based parkour game that pops to mind is Mirror's Edge, which released way back in 2008, yet no other parkour game since then has really soared into the limelight. Maybe EA just cursed the genre, maybe everyone just settled for those Minecraft parkour courses instead. Or maybe they exist nowadays as simple concept pieces to practice creating first-person jumping physics with subtle convoluted elements to a story weaved in like subtle seasoning in a meat patty. Which brings me on to the latest outing from Manning Media, Back Again, as asked by the chiropractor as the gamer with posture pain walked into the physio. Back Again is the second video game outing from fellow brummy Dexter Manning of Manning Media, after his visual novel-slash-action game Flappertron. And while that game is more about... Back Again is a much more laid-back experience, personally. Aside from all the anger and rage as you keep failing and falling into the pit of despair and being sent back and hearing the repeating voice line Back Again over and over again, the gameplay is simple. Keep jumping from platform to platform as Dex spouts some more philosophical lexus to you, contemplating why you're even attempting to complete this course. Almost as if he'd sobered himself up from the comparative acid trip that was the approach to Flappertron. Though later on, he starts slowly getting ticked off at you for actually trying to complete the game. Kinda doing that whole Portal Stanley Parable thing where the game requires an opposing force of some kind. Said force ending up being a philosophy teacher having an existential crisis when a student suddenly starts overperforming. The game as a whole is a relatively simple experience. No more waiting through long cutscenes to get to the fun gameplay. You're thrown straight in with only move and jump as your controls, over a path of platforms over a space void inhabited only by naked mannequins. Some footage of which I don't think I'm allowed to show on YouTube. And the gameplay itself actually feels quite strong in my opinion. It remains relatively simple with longer and shorter platforms, moving obstacles, pressing switches, faster sections. I personally love the floatiness of the jumping. It adds to the feeling of flying through space in this peculiar void. And most times when I fail to land on a platform, I do feel like that that was my own fault. Most of the time. I did have one or two instances on my first playthrough where I seemed to make a perfect landing and then immediately slip off to the side, which I'm not sure is even intentional or not. The game will cost you about a dollar, or less than a quid for us Brits. So what I'm basically saying is, it's really cheap. It's a simple game that'll last you an hour or two, depending on how well you tackle the puzzles. So if you are looking for a short, highly budget game to enjoy, I would recommend this one. With that being said, is it weird that I find this game slightly relaxing in a way? The music for it sounds absolutely fantastic and helps set up the feeling of euphoria and progression really well as it layers on as you beat each checkpoint. I don't know, for something that markets itself as a rage game, I didn't really rage that much during it. Sure, it's annoying when you slip off and are sent back to a checkpoint, but the checkpoints are generally pretty generous and it utilizes fairly standing platforming tactics to get you through in the best way. Hell, even the puzzle progress is saved each time that you die. Maybe I've just played too much Geometry Dash over the years, although if you quit the game and then come back later, it will send you right back to the start. Because it's all or nothing for this game, you gotta be in it to win it as Dex puts it himself. The game's definitely short enough so far. The real challenge is in survival mode, where it really is all one attempt with no checkpoints. It also feels like it would be an interesting experience for speedrunners, though a timed option isn't available right now, though it would be really cool to possibly see one in the future if time allowed. But in summary, Pack Again is a good, well-working casual rage parkour for those looking for a fresh, couple hour long game to experience in their Steam library. That or you're really into dancing suggestive mannequins.